Do you accept, because in 2004, I think a lot of people would have said that the Tory brand was still tarnished. It was still recovering from the defeat of 97 yeah. and 2001. And that you got a lot of disaffected Tory votes. Uh, that won't be so easy this time, will it? Well, I wouldn't overanalyze the number of people that vote for us in European elections that come straight to us from the Conservative Party. I'm not saying all, but you know, a fair no, number must have done. A fair chunk do, but, but let's not look at it in isolation, because in fact, I think our biggest vote in the last European elections were people who otherwise wouldn't have gone out and voted for anybody. All right? The, of course the Tories appear to be doing well, although perhaps in reality it's Labour that is doing very, very badly. The vast majority, clear majority, and we're talking here 70 to 80 percent, according to opinion polls of Conservative voters, may prefer to see David Cameron holding the keys to the door to number 10 than Gordon Brown, but they do not agree and don't support David Cameron's policy on the European Union. And a European election is an opportunity to vote on an issue rather than to vote for your normal tribal badge. And all the, I mean, I have not met people out there who are saying, well, we voted UKIP last time, but we're going Tory this time. Because those that go out to vote in European elections do so understanding that it is a European election and not a general election. And one of the reasons why people like Stuart Wheeler, for example, who's been a lifelong Tory supporter and significant donor, one of the reasons that people like Stuart Wheeler are backing UKIP in this campaign is they hope that in doing so, they might wake David Cameron up to the kind of Conservative government that Tory voters want next time round. So there's quite a big incentive for Tory Eurosceptics to lend their vote to UKIP on June the 4th. Mr Wheeler writing you the sort of checks that he used to write for the Tory party? Not the one that he wrote for them back in 2001, no. Not as big as that. Not as big as that. I mean, he's been giving... Are you getting some checks? <clears throat> for the last few years, Stuart Wheeler's been giving the Conservative Party 50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. He's given us more than that. All right. You said in a recent interview that if UKIP did badly in the June European elections, quote, it will be the whole anti-EU movement that has a problem. It won't just be UKIP. It will be the whole anti-EU movement. What did you yeah, mean by that? Well, I think that we've had, since Maastricht, really, since Maastricht, we've had an anti-EU movement in Britain. <coughs> we've had intellectual groups producing papers and documents, and one can think of the Bruges Group and organisations like that. We've, had, we've, we've got think tanks out there like Open Europe and uh, the Taxpayers' Alliance who do some tremendous work on all of this. But, but I think of UKIP in European elections, in a sense, as being the electoral wing of a big Eurosceptic movement. There are 36 different Eurosceptic groups at last count <coughs> in this country. Um, yeah, I think if UKIP did badly, that would damage the Eurosceptic movement. And the other fear that I've got, and, and I think well, you know, one has to say this, is that if, and I don't believe it will happen, but if it was seen after June the 4th, that in fact the anti-EU or actually anti-Europe voice was that of the BMP, then I think it would put back the day at which we renegoci renegotiate our relationship by perhaps a decade or, or, or more. So I do have some fears for this election. Isn't, yes. Shouldn't your biggest fear for June be that you do lose out to the BMP? It's a concern. Uh, of course it's a concern. But we will, especially in those northern constituencies, uh, be taking the arguments absolutely head on and we'll be saying to people, look, in UKIP, You've got a party that is a patriotic party, but does believe that this country has done some great things and still has some good values that we should cherish, preserve and fight for. You've got in UKIP a party, the only party that voted against the completely irresponsible open-door immigration policy to Eastern Europe. We believe in controlling our borders. We believe in work permits. But you don't need to be tempted by the extremes to express those opinions. You can genuinely do it through a non-racist, non-sectarian party in voting UKIP. So don't hold your nose and vote BMP. Come and vote for us. And we'll take those arguments on. Now, you say you're a libertarian. And you mentioned your immigration policy. But what's libertarian, libertarian about a policy that would ban immigration? For five years. Well, look, we are in a complete mess at the moment. We've had even Home Secretaries admitting that we have no idea how many people are living in the country. And what we're suggesting is whilst we go on, 
having foreign workers come to Britain, just as ours will go elsewhere, and we do that on a proper work permit system, that we're not actually going to grant citizenship to new people, to new immigrants, for a period of up to five years, whilst we sort the mess out. So we're saying, let's sort the mess out. Let's find out who lives here. Let's find out who is here legally, who is here illegally. And once we've done that, perhaps then we can return to a sensible immigration policy. What we've currently got um, is a hopeless mess, and as far as the EU is concerned, it's a complete open door. I mean, look, just last week, the Romanian president last week granted one million passports to people from Moldova. That means they can all come here. We've got to get a grip of this. Now, you know, Milton Friedman, if, if one wants to talk about free traders and libertarians, <clears throat> I think Milton Friedman would be on the libertarian pedestal if anybody was. And even he said that you cannot have the free movement of peoples all the while you've got a social security system. But is it a ban or a freeze? Because the words are different, but it seem to be used interchangeably. It's a freeze. It's a freeze. At, the current, at current levels? It's, we're saying, let's freeze immigration. So no more immigration? No more immigration until we sort out the mess of who's here. But we're not saying that people can't come here and work. No exceptions then? So if I can get a permit if I'm a yes. foreigner, can um, I come? There will be exceptions, the usual exceptions for family members and that Parents kind of thing. and grandparents born here? There will be, of course there'll be exceptions, but, but in the main, in the main, we've got mm. to find out who's living in Britain because we in, don't know. Including all members of the European Union? Of course. So we'd have to leave before you could do this? Well, of course, and that's the point, isn't it? I mean, the argument I'm trying to make to people mm. is, you will not hear this from the Tories, Labour or Lib Dems, mm. but we cannot... It would be illegal if you're in the EU to do it this. It would be, but they never discuss this. But the argument is, you cannot have your own immigration and asylum policy and be part of this political union. Even if you're in favour of leaving the European Union mm. altogether, don't you think some people will think that in the grip of the worst recession for 60 years, it may be worth postponing any departure? Well, we had the budget uh, recently. Uh, very interesting. The one thing that Darling did say that I agreed with is that we can't cut our way out of a recession. I agree with that. We can cut and reduce the PSBR, but we can't actually... We need growth, don't we, to get out of this mess. We're paying a membership fee of £40 million a day to the European Union, but that is the tip of the iceberg in terms of cost. The most recent analysis shows the cost the regulatory burden on Britain of being part of this EU, plus the lost opportunity cost of the deals that we can't do with other parts of the world, to be up to 8% of our GDP. I mean, here we are talking about whether financial stimulus um, is the equivalent to 1.5% or 2% of our economy. <clears throat> Here's an opportunity by changing our relationship with the European Union, where we can increase our GDP by a minimum, mm. a conservative estimate, of 5%. Now, that needs to be part of this national debate. But even if these figures were accepted, and obviously people, others, and the other side of the argument would dispute them, at a time of recession, when the economy is in free fall at the moment, would you really want to add the uncertainty of uh, leaving the world's biggest trading bloc, of potentially cutting off export markets. We're not doing that. I mean, that argument, that argument's been dealt with time and again. You know, and you can go across the... Indulge me. Try it one more You can time. go across the water. You can speak to the European Commission. You can speak to Giscard d'Estaing, the author of the Constitution. You can talk to ex-Commissioner Kinnock or whoever you like, and they're all saying the same thing. That, of course, if Britain wishes to change her relationship to a simple free trade agreement, she can do so. There's absolutely no prospect of us coming out of political union and not being able to have a trade deal. Well, you say that, uh, but as you know, in Paris and in Berlin, there is great unease at the way sterling has been devalued recently, because hmm. it makes us much more competitive it, yeah. in their markets. And if we were to pull out, wouldn't this give the Franco-German alliance a huge opportunity to come up with all sorts of non-tariff oh. barriers that would harm our exports? They'd be very silly to want to do that, wouldn't Why? they? Why? would protect because, themselves. Because we are their biggest export market in the world. So we they would need retaliate. Us. They need us. We'd retaliate. Well, We'd have a well, trade war well, with Europe. Well, that, in fact, would be against agreed WTO rules anyway. Look, I mean, no one seriously thinks that if Britain changes her relationship with the European Union from one of membership to one of free trade, friendship and cooperation, nobody seriously thinks that the chief executive of Mercedes would say, well, if that's the case, we want to have a trade war with Britain. They most certainly wouldn't. But the exciting thing 
The exciting thing about breaking this link with, with political union is it would then give us the opportunity to forge our own trade deals with the rest of the world. I mean, very few people, even businesses, know that we're forbidden, forbidden, from having our own trade deals around the rest of the world because we're part of this European Union. To find out more about who we are and what we stand for, go to the UK Independence Party website at www.ukip.org.